Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells with another episode of Smithbusters. And today we're going to examine a touchy myth, and that is, are synthetic stocks better than wood stocks? That's right, I'm Steve. I'm sure a lot of you think the answer is obvious. Yeah, and like for everyone out there who thinks the answer is obvious, they're like, Pfft obvious it's wood stocks and then the other half of you are like yeah. obvious it's synthetic stocks. right down the middle most likely. right down the so uh mm -hmm. that's why we're going to talk about this so right before this video maybe i don't know two minutes ago i uh, turned to our intern and i said hey what's better wood or synthetic stocks and he looked me dead in the eyes and he said wood stocks and i said why he said because they look better that's uh okay and yeah and i i said you're absolutely right I think in most cases, wood stocks do look a whole lot better. Well, unless you're into finely machined aluminum chassis on your tactical gun. Yeah, but we're not, I don't want to talk, I don't want to bring chassis into this. Uh, we're just, okay. let's just talk okay. about stocks. They are pretty, pretty nice sometimes. They, yeah, we, we have a couple of them in here. I just built a gun. We, they're, they're, hey, listen, if that's your thing, <laughs> if you're, if you're feeling it, you know, chassis is where it's at. Uh, I'm pretty old school on my rifles. I do like some walnut though. Yeah. You cannot beat yeah. a good cut. I say a good cut of walnut. This is some okay walnut. This is uh this is one we've had in here for a while, just kind of collecting dust. It's not perfect. But you is, digress. I digress. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on track. Um so, yeah. so synthetic has come on really strong in the last what, twenty years, mm -hmm. twenty five? Before that we had the Rhinite stocks and the nylon stocks and i used to have a nylon 66 great gun and i think uh, winchester had a nylon stock shotgun at one time but they didn't work very well yeah and you know just to kind of touch on synthetics modern synthetics are absolutely insane as far as what they'll endure so there's a there's that argument right there and what it really comes down to is, you know, if one's better or not, yes, aesthetics is one thing, but it's what you're going to be using it for. For example, if I'm hunting whitetail in, you know, Louisiana or whatever, right? and there's, I can, the weather's for the most part, pretty predictable, uh, wooden stock is, I'm never going to see any performance degradation from a wooden stock. Right. Now, if you're in Alaska where it gets cold and rains and fogs and sleets and snows and goes sub-zero, maybe a synthetic stock wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, especially if you have those like very wide temperature ranges within right. a, a short amount of time. Uh, because wood, if you know anything about wood, wood swells, it, you know, it shrinks, it does all kind of weird stuff with the weather, right. uh, the moisture content in the air, um, all that stuff. And so wood and the reason that matters is because your action to stock fitment is then compromised and that could affect your accuracy right and brownells built kind of a reputation on glass bedding stocks with acroglass and aluminum pillars and all that to make them as stable as possible yeah so i mean in theory you could take a wood stock and if you bed it correctly like full length bed that sucker you're going to get the same performance uh, out of, you know, the best bedded synthetic stock as well. You're not really going to see much of a difference. Right. And if you uh, have aluminum pillars, you don't have to worry about wood compression over time. Yeah. So with that being said, so if you can modify a wooden stock to be just as good as synthetic, then is wood better in that case? And for that, I would still say not in all cases because there are some wooden stocks out there that are very, very expensive because right. of the way they like your Turkish walnuts and stuff like that. Um, and your different like crazy checkerings and, and all the, the, the fine, yep. finer things. I, you wouldn't want to take one of those up a mountain or something like that. Right. And you wouldn't want to run it over with a four wheeler synthetic stock. No problem. Yeah. This thing right here, I like, I, I'm tempted to just take it out and run it over with a four wheeler just because I can. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to do that with the wooden stock. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't. I don't want to run anything over with anything. Today. Yeah, I've, I've noticed an awful lot of people up in the northern climates, like Alaska and, and Alberta and whatever, they have stainless metal and some kind of synthetic stock. Yeah, and let's take a look at this hoe here, for example. This one has a full-length aluminum bedding inside of it. Right. So there is a solid aluminum block from where that rear action screw goes in all the way to the tip of the nose here. Yep. 
Nice so, and neat. Yeah, you can throw a bipod on this thing and not have to worry about it flexing and pushing against your barrel and affecting your accuracy. This is almost like running a chassis because right. it, it's a chassis that just looks like a stock, essentially. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the, as far as, you know, like affordable stocks go that are really durable, mm -hmm. that's probably a, really the best option is a synthetic with the aluminum bedding. Yeah. That those are bomb proof. And if you're a bench rester, you know, you would, if you wanted to go with wood, you'd go with like a laminated wood stock to stabilize, you know, apply wood stock basically. Yeah. Yep. So laminate woods like yeah. uh, Boyd's makes a ton of those as right. well as some more classic stuff, but they're, they kind of built, I think, I, I would think it's safe to say they built most of their reputation on laminate stocks. That's what they're most a known for. A lot of for. them, especially when they came out with the different colors. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. So you can get a really flashy looking laminated stock that kind of hides the whole effect makes it look good yeah so i think it's for the for the overall theme of the myth here i think it's safe to say that with all the modern uh advances and you know different stock technologies and things we can do to wooden stocks um it really comes down to personal preference and and really just how hard you want to be on a wooden stock right right and again hard use synthetic will take dings dents get run over whatever and just bounce back yeah, so uh, for those of you who are accuracy minded, it is what I'm kind of getting at here. You can make a wood stock be just as accurate as this synthetic yeah. aluminum bedded stock. It, it can be done. So you don't need to kind of think about that whenever you're selecting your stock anymore. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's personal preference. Boom, there it Gotta is. Gotta remember, a lot of deer hunters use nothing but wood stock for many, many years. Many, I would say wood stock guns have killed more uh, deer in America than synthetic stocks at, at this point. At this point, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the myth is more or less busted. Yeah, and I mean, it's personal preference at, at this point, nowadays. Yeah. So there you yeah. have it. So that's it for this week. If you have a comment or a favorite between wood and synthetic, please let us know down below. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll probably see you next time with another episode of Smithbusters.